Well, hi, Linda. Why don't we start with your name, your title, and responsibilities? Sure. Uh, my name is Linda Lee. I work for GE Capital, and I'm the Global Advertising and Brand Director. I basically manage all of the um, advertising as well as the brand initiatives for the company. Okay. Well, congrats on the EFI for um, uh, what we what we know can help you grow. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about what was what drove that campaign. What was the inspiration behind it? Sure. Um, I guess in um, early 2014, when we were thinking about the TV concepts, we came across um, this video campaign from eBay, and it was called uh, Thanks You, right? And one of the uh, videos featured uh, this guy named Ed Church, and it was about this man who found his um, very first motorcycle back on eBay. Um, it's a great story, and the story unfolds with him um, you know, seeking out his motorcycle on eBay, he lost it on a bid, and then many years later he found it back on eBay, and then he bought back his original motorcycle. And the story unfolds in this documentary style format. So the story was, for me, felt really real and authentic. So we wanted to do something quite similar. We wanted to tell that compelling story just the way they did it, but about us, about what we do to help our customers grow. The, the ad focuses on the value they provide outside of financing. I'm curious, you know, how, how did you get there? Sure. Um, I think what we needed to do to tell our stories, um, we have to do it in a unique way. And we have to differentiate ourselves from every other bank. So, you know, we started looking at what is our value proposition. And it's really what we call more than money. We lend money, but we do so much more. We have experts um, from across GE. See, we're part of a much larger organization. And we have experts literally across the world with very deep domain expertise and knowledge, and our customers can tap into that. So the public, I think, does not understand that GE Capital, we, yeah, we lend money, but we have so much wealth of resources and knowledge. That's really sort of the seed of what our campaign was about. And how did you select the companies that you profile? That is um, an interesting question. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> uh, I basically, you know, in a sense, start trolling for uh, great stories. And typically it's from, I mean, GE Capital is made up of hundreds of divisions, right, within a company. So I would go to sort of the marketing or communications leaders um, for any really great compelling stories that they have. But over time, I realized the best story were coming from our employees, the sales force, the people who actually interact with the customers. And then after four years of doing this, I realized I go straight to the source. And then they'll give me these awesome stories. And this year I decided to crowdsource it. And I ran a contest where every sales rep or account leader can actually submit a story from all over the world. And that's how they were selected. So one of the aspects you talked about was storytelling. And I'm curious if you can tell me, you know, not having much experience with that prior um, with GE Capital, um, how'd you approach that? Well, we um, actually, uh, for the campaign, we probably reviewed over 50 customer stories. Um, their various profiles, again, from multiple different levels of businesses and industries. Um, so I wanted to find unique stories because we were a unique lender, right? Um, the value proposition was that we differentiate ourselves. So in the storytelling sense, I wanted to find really interesting stories that I don't think any other bank could tell. So in the What You Know Can Help You Grow, we found three amazing customers. One happened to be a wood manufacturer. The other um, happened to be in aerospace components, right? And the third happened to make bread. So, I mean, you think about the varied storytelling, but all the, you know, what differentiates each one of them is that they have such a unique story and how we went about helping them. For Kings Hawaiian, we actually logistically helped them expand their operations, not only from Hilo to California, all the way to Atlanta, and actually helped them build a whole new plant so they can expand the distribution to the East Coast. With um, the uh, aerospace components, I mean, we actually went in and did sort of a lean workout. We looked at every single minutia step of their manufacturing process and we found holes, we found gaps. We found ways to um, speed their production and reduce waste. That's very unique. So I think all three stories had a very unique angle and that's how we start, and that's how we chose them. Telling stories in a B2B context, it must have been um, not an easy sell necessarily. I'm just curious, how do you convince the leadership that that was the right right thing to do? I think um, 
the most effective way to convince them was actually show what the competition was doing. So we did sort of a competitive review of all the other banks, right? I mean, they're the ones that everyone knows mm -hmm. of. And then each bank had the same similar format where they would feature a customer. This customer always loves their bank and because they're great, right? But why? <laughs> so when we started showing our executives, hey, this is what is out there. We always say our value proper proposition that we differentiate ourselves because we're more than money, right? But we have to do that in our advertising and our marketing. And the only way to do that is actually take a different POV. So we featured our employees and our employees narrating the stories about how they help their customers overcome their challenges. That is unique. And I think that's why our executive, um, they rallied behind it because they knew being unique is what would actually get us to win. So you've created a lot of content, um, a lot of stories. How do you manage that and, and distribute it and, and to who? That is a very good question. That was a challenge that we faced just recently. Um, we had to take a step back and we had to take an inventory of the content that we had out there. And we had, you know, we had proprietary content, we had third party content, we had branded content. There was so much out there that we really couldn't make sense of it. So we flipped it and said, hey, if I was a customer, if I was an audience, why would I read this? What is content for me? So instead of viewing content from an advertiser's perspective, you've got to view it from a customer's perspective and what's interesting to them, what provides utility for them. So I think it's just a different mindset in terms of how and why you use content. Is there any tips or, or advice you'd give marketers in that regard or, or um, potentially even selecting the right partner to help you with that? I think, again, it goes back to the customer and the user experience. Um, let's say, for example, sort of the website experience. We had our original website built on how we structured as an organization, as a financial services. So we have product level, industry level. But if I'm a customer or a prospect, I don't go into a website thinking in those terms. I think, okay, commercial lending, you know, leasing, it, the products that I want in the industry. So I think, again, you have to see it from a user's experience versus, again, an advertiser or a company's experience. Do you ever feel more like an editor than a marketer in that regard? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Sometimes I have to stop myself and to say, hey, if I was to see this or I was to view this or if I was to hear this, how, how does it impact me? How do I feel about it? You know, was it good for me? Uh, again, a lot of times we always, as advertisers, we think something's very good, but it may not actually be if you see it, if you view it from a different hat. You know? So there's a lot of decisions that end up, you know, taking place to get a campaign launched. Um, were there any crucial ones or pivotal ones for this campaign? Um, I think for us, we did have to pick the right story. And the story has to be sort of relevant or relatable to the audience. When you think about GE Capital, we finance across many industries, all types of uh, businesses, mostly mid-market. I mean, they're as obscure as making nuts and bolts in automotive part to like huge aerospace parts, right, or composite ceramics. So we have to find um, stories that I think the audience could really relate to. But, you know, it, it's not going to be obscure enough, but it's going to be relatable enough that they, they understand what we can bring to the customer. What kind of team did you have behind this effort? The team is pretty lean. <laughs> um, GE Capital, we, we are a financial services company. So um, the resources that goes into marketing, particularly in advertising, is, um, I would say, minimal. So for me, I wear a hat that probably is about five different roles. Um, I not only do I produce the content, but I also you know, manage the media strategy. I oversee advertising. I, I'm even part of the production. So I have to rely heavily on our agencies, particularly our creative agencies, and they are basically my team. And the team that we worked with at BBDO, I've been working with for almost five years. So in a sense, they're, they're kind of my employees or we all work together on this. Were there any leaps of faith that you had to take to, to get this off the ground? Oh, sure. I mean, this was <laughs> a huge gamble. Um, our, our company has never done or told stories in this way. Um, in sort of a documentary style format or, or even, you know, do TV in a big way. So it was a big gamble, but we had to sort of convince our executives that in order to tell the story, you know, we really had to put enough resources into it and that, 
you know, the stories don't come to life unless we really put sort of the, you know, the support from the company. And, um, you know, for us, I think uh, it was actually a, a, a gamble that was well received. It, it did really well, not only with our audience, but also internally, where our employee base really rallied behind the messaging because it was them. We were featuring them. So I think uh, for the most part, the success for me was seeing our employees really being proud of the work that was out there. So not to mention you're at GE, but also in a financial industry, sure. measurement's a big deal. Sure. Mm -hmm. So how did you measure this campaign? I think for TV, as everyone knows, it, it's quite hard, right? Um, you could measure it in the classic sense of your KPIs, right? In terms of your impressions and your reach. Um, but I think what for us is, you know, our goals were to, you know, again, change the perception that GE was more than just a bank. And then as we started doing surveys of our brand awareness, top, top of mind, as well as considerations, our numbers kept going up as this campaign rolled out. And really, it's the equity. Do we, you know, do you view GE Capital different from your other banks? That's when we knew that we were succeeding, when those numbers were getting ahead of our competition. Well, winning on the FE is really about marketing effectiveness. So I'm mm -hmm. curious, how do you define or, or tackle marketing effectiveness? I think for us at GE Capital, marketing effectiveness is closely tied with our goals. Um, so in this campaign, we really set out to change the perception that GE Capital is like every other lender. Uh, but in reality, we are more than just a lender. I mean, we, again, we provide uh, expertise from across GE. And as I mentioned before, we have a wealth of experts across the world that we can tap into, our customers could tap into. We can help them you know, overcome any of the challenges or resolve any issues. And really, the purpose is to help them grow. I want to switch gears for a second and talk a little bit more about you. You've um, ascended to a, a good level of success. And I was just curious, what fuels that for you? Um, I think I still have a lot more to do and accomplish. I think I'm just, it's just tip of the iceberg of what we've been doing. Um, but I think what fuels me the most is, um, I would say the learning process. Because when I think about the advertising and the media industry, it's evolving so rapidly that what I've done, what we do today can become quickly irrelevant or obsolete. So for me, I have to continually innovate as well as evolve my marketing strategies to stay on top of trends and to you know, not be a follower, but to actually be a leader in this industry. And being a marketer, I'm sure you watch other companies that are marketing themselves or brands. Um, are there any that stand out to you or that you, you look to, to inspire you or, or that you just like? Um, for me personally, the, the brands that I, I like to follow are the ones that are innovative, like the Amazons as well as the Samsungs. They're typically the first adopters of new technology, and those are the companies that are really exciting and you know very interesting to follow. And then I also follow some of our, you know, maybe our competition or other financial services companies like Prudential. I think Prudential. I think they won the FEs last year. They had this great series of campaigns about how you know people's dreams of when they retire, and that's great storytelling. What do you see as the biggest opportunity for marketing today? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think what we've seen is this huge shift in our audience engagement on their mobile devices, right? So what we felt was that in order, you know, for us to really have a great presence in mobile, our customers have to have a good experience with our brand, right, on their smartphones. So what does that mean? That means that you have to, you know, have branded content that's contextually relevant. So if I produce or if you produce content for a display, that doesn't necessarily translate or adaptable to mobile. It's probably better to really tailor content for the mobile experience. So I think that's a huge opportunity, not only for GE Capital, but for most brands out there. Are there any big challenges or, or watch outs that you would tell marketers? Sure. I mean, I think for us, a big challenge um, recently is really scaling content. What I mean is to have content scaled enough that uh, for digital channels, of course, uh, but that reaches your audience. I mean, we've had, you know, this past year, you know, we took a look at of our content. We were producing so much, but it wasn't necessarily reaching a broad audience. Uh, so we really had to rethink about how and where we use content in order to, you know, in order to uh, reach our audience. 
What would you predict for the future of marketing? I can't predict the future, <laughs> but I think what is for certain that it's always changing and that you have to be open to change. I think in order to be relevant in this industry, you really have to keep your eyes open and be fluid in terms of what you want to do uh, with your marketing effectiveness or your campaigns, but be open to change. Now you're a B2B company, um, and many times in that chair I am talking to consumer companies. So what, would you, what advice would you give to B2B marketers in terms of helping them be more effective or, or stand out maybe from the pack? I think um, what I see from B2B, just the similarities to B2C to B2B, right? I've worked in both worlds. And our audience, even though they're CEOs or CFOs of large companies, you know, they're still people, right? So no matter how you market, whether it's a consumer or whether it's executive, you still have to you know, be relevant. You have to be, let's say, um, you, know, you have to provide some utility, right, in terms of your brand. It has to resonate. They have to be loyal to your brand. So instead of differences, I say focus on the similarities in B2B. Okay. Well, thank you very much.